Hello, and welcome to the last day of our Easter meditations. It's Friday, Good Friday. And after a week that started so brightly with the proclamation of Jesus as King Messiah by the people of Jerusalem, we now come to the day that should be considered the darkest day in human history, a day all of humanity is in some way responsible for. Jesus, the Son of God, sentenced to death on a cross to pay for our sins. For most Christians, this will be a day of reflection. Some of you hearing this may already have been to an early morning service or gathered at crosses on hillsides. Maybe you will attend an event such as Station to the Cross where you spend several hours going through the story or you just sit and pray at home. Whatever and however you do it, this is a day to reflect on the fact that over 2,000 years ago, this was the day the price of your salvation was paid by our Lord's sacrifice. It started in the garden with the arrest of our Lord, betrayed by a disciple. Jesus is then tried, first by the religious leaders, then by the Roman authorities, where after a brutal and humiliating scourging at their hands, he is finally condemned to death when the people choose Barabbas, a known murderer over Jesus to be released by Pilate. The one they called King Messiah just a few short days ago, they now condemn. It will end now with a cross that he is given to carry through the streets where in a crown of thorns, he carries it on a back all torn up by the cruel whips of the Romans. It's no wonder he stumbles and falls and eventually needs to be helped by Simon. At Golgotha, he is stripped and nailed to a cross hung between two thieves to hang for six hours. Forsaken by God in torment and agony, he finally exclaims loudly, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. He breathes his last breath and dies. It's a picture that to us as Christians is horrifying, yet Jesus bears the cross with all its pain in such a pure, righteous, dignified way that Mark tells us that a centurion watching on remarked, truly this man was the Son of God. A sign that Jesus' death so moved him, he became possibly one of the first people in history to find faith at the cross, the thief being the first. As Jesus' mission on the cross to pay for our sin is fulfilled, very publicly yet quietly, two men do something quite brave and costly as an act of service for our Lord that I think is worth noting today, just as the gospel writers did. We're going to read two passages, one from Mark chapter 15, verses 42 to 47, and John chapter 19, verses 31 to 37. You can also find reference to these two men doing this act in Luke chapter 23, verses 50 to 56, and Matthew 27, verses 57 to 61. But let us begin with the Mark passage, starting at verse 42. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised to hear that he should already have died. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph, and Joseph brought a linen shroud and taken him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where he was laid. Now let's read the John passage from verse 38. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So Jesus, because of the Jewish day of preparation, 
since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. In the eyes of the world, it had taken less than 24 hours for Jesus to go from hero to zero. His enemies had triumphed. The disciples were in disarray. So two men who had nothing to gain and everything to lose stepped forward. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, both members of the Sanhedrin, a council of religious leaders in Jerusalem. The first of them, Joseph, is described in Luke's account as a good and righteous man who had dissented from the decision to destroy Jesus. And the second was Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee. He was a famous Pharisee. He was the one to whom the most famous verse from the Bible, John 3:16, was spoken to by Jesus at an evening meeting. Both secret, quiet followers of our Lord. They go to Pilate with a sense of urgency. They know that Jesus' dead body must be buried today in accordance with Jewish custom. Getting permission from Pilate, Joseph and Nicodemus spare no time and no small amount of money as Joseph buys a linen shroud and opens up his own rock-cut tomb to place Jesus in. Nicodemus provides 75 pounds of expensive myrrh and aloes. At this point, it would be normal to point out how this act fulfills so many prophecies, which it does. But it also gives us an insight into what it means to be a follower of Jesus. As men of faith and followers of Jesus, at this most dangerous moment, to be known as such, they step out of the shadows and stand up for Jesus. They bury Jesus in the high manner in which they esteemed him, willing to give as much as they could to honour him, even at this seemingly dark and dangerous hour. They did this for Jesus without knowing what would happen next. They stepped out bravely, not fully understanding the truth of the cross. Jesus was still dead as they stepped out, not yet resurrected. His body they carried was limp and lifeless. They laid him in the tomb, and as they rolled the stone in front of the tomb, they had done all they possibly could for their Lord, faithful to the end. But praise be to God, it's not the end, is it? And I believe these two men are a challenge to us, a challenge for us to stand with Jesus when times seem dark and dangerous, when the world seems against us. We are called as Christians who know the truth of his death and resurrection to stand for him in the power of the Holy Spirit. So today, yes, is a sad day of reflection as we reflect on the cross, but it's a day where we are also shown men and women of God standing for Jesus, standing for the one to whom we call Lord, our Saviour. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for dying upon that cross. We thank you for the price you paid for our sin. Now, Lord, as you send the Spirit into each of our lives, I ask that you, you just help us to stand. You help us to love you so much that we are willing to stand up and stand out when, when the world seems to be against us. Lord, we again, we thank you for your death, but we praise you and we praise the Father and we praise the Holy Spirit that in two days' time we will be celebrating the resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen.